Game two is just about upon us, everyone. It is Clement versus Fish, one salty boy versus one <laughs> host. I'm just kidding. It's back to Snake versus Vici. We'll get that solved a little bit later in the game uh, to see who of you two actually is more correct over what he said just a little bit ago. But let's 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 turn our attention back to Snake versus Vici. Okay. Okay. And uh, I, I want to get it from you straight from the right. horse's mouth. Can Vici bring us to a game three? Do they have it in them to try to run this series back? Why am I a horse? But it's it's a yeah. phrase. It's okay, a okay. Saying. The answer is no. Okay. All right, there you go. <laughs> All right. So why? What's holding the back? Is it is it the not communicating with Swift? Was it long on the J? So uh, Snow had a great bottom lane uh, right. despite being initially down in CS. So we we do have to paint a general picture of Vici, and there's okay. a reason why they're currently like seventh place in their own conference. And, and the, the kind of the harsh reality is that they don't have a single winning lane. None of mm -hmm. their lanes are actually up in GD. Uh, their only winning point on the map in some games, I would say, would be Swift. Yeah. That's about it. So for them to really come back and have a cohesive game plan, it, it's going to drag them into a lot of pitfalls. So mm -hmm. basically, the only thing that we've seen Vici really being success, uh, successful on is a super late game, super Azir-reliant composition. Yeah. However, if they go on that route, I don't see them going to win against Snake. So yes. Snake is really good on engagers. They're really good at breaking siege holds. So... They're pretty much experts at going against that composition. And if they're going to move towards something like they did with the long Jace, yeah. the, uh, the Zaya Rakan, I mean, that said, that, that's another risk in itself. After that game that we just saw in which Snake went to the 39-40 minute mark, their average game time might actually be the longest in the league. They were five seconds behind last place <laughs> for the longest game time. That could have been it to drag them out. So if any team is familiar with late game, you know, we joke about WE, we joke about Vici. At, in 2018 spring, it's Snake. That's a horrible sign from Snake, actually. Oh, no. <laughs> that, that actually means they're a very inconsistent team uh -huh. because they're, are, they're not just playing against the top of the league. They're playing against the bottom of the league, yeah. and they're still putting up Hitting the same game very plan. long numbers. So yeah. that means they're actually something's going wrong in their mid and early games. Yeah. Okay, well, we'll have to see if that they can fix that in this next game. Again, we pointed out Crystal's inconsistency in positioning in the AD carry. Sometimes when he's disrespectful, he steps up and gets caught out of position, yeah. um, which is exactly what happened in the laning phase. He was uh, about 20 CS up and still ended up being caught out by the Zaya Rakan combo with the exact same items as the opponent lane. Yep, that's um, a big worry for Snake right now because if the playoffs are locked today, he will be facing Uzi across mm -hmm. the board. So Uzi is known for as the dominant, most dominant laning AD carry we've ever seen in the LPL. And for Crystal to uh, survive that, that matchup, yeah. Last I wouldn't time even we've say seen step it. up. I'd say it's survive. <laughs> <laughs> Just try to weather the storm at yeah. that point, because that's exactly what it is. That said, some of the other lanes are doing pretty fantastic. Quoco holding his own against the likes of Easy Hoon. We never really look to Easy Hoon to be a huge hyper carry for the likes of Vici, but that doesn't mean that he's any less talented. Well, we do look for that, because that's pretty much been their win condition yeah. like for, uh, for a lot of the times. He is really known for his Azir. Man's got a skin on it. Um, but the problem is that he needs to diversify his style. It, it basically isn't Season 5 anymore. Someone yeah. needs to tell him we're in Season 8. There's more mid laners than Victor and Azir in the mid lane. It's, it's the mid jungle duo ever since 8.4 and that's what's been defining most of these games. Yeah, so when you don't really think of a team that has a mid jungler synergy or you don't really think of a team that can play a diverse uh, roster of champions in the mid lane, you do kind of question their flexibility, their ability to to plan specific games and such, so forth and so on. So I, I do agree on Frostcorn on a lot of points that Easy Yoon is weighting Vici down quite a bit. Yeah. Well, we'll have to see if he can try to bring his team back together, of course. The 2015 World Champion, he's been with Vici Gaming ever since, through the LSPL, through the LPL qualifiers and disqualifiers. And now he's back and he is here to stay. Here you can still see the Coach of Snake on your screen giving some very yep. stern words to SOFF. I could see him like uh, juggling his hands around, talking about swaps. He's probably telling all of the players to switch Flash onto F, yes. like most people yeah. do. Like regular human. Wait a second. <laughs> <laughs> this is a conversation that we had earlier. But that said, he's still one of the most emphatic coaches in the league. Can he bring his team to a game two closeout, or will Vici be able to run it back to a game three? They're climbing up against the odds. It's always very interesting to see the uh, difference between player coaches and kind of uh, logistical coaches. Mm -hmm. So we have Coach Sim, who was never a professional player, become a coach, and he really views things from a different angle. He's a lot about set plays and stuff. And then you have uh, 
uh, Snake's coach, who was previously on Wai Spiders, was a professional player himself, and you can tell the style about Snake revolves a lot more around fighting and actually outplaying the opponent in terms of those picks and fights. So, interesting contrast right there. It certainly is, but we have now entered picks and bands for this game two. Once again, Vici Gaming, they've chosen red side for this game two. And just to be perfectly clear, clear, Vici have won a single game, not match, game in 2018 on the red side. The rest have been a grand total of 14 losses. So clearly, They've got some sort of plan if they've opted into this. We just have yet to see well, what it is. Well, to be fair, I don't think they have a good win rate on the blue side either. It's but... a little better. It's 7 to 11. Uh, 7 to 11. Okay, okay. Much better, actually. Seven times higher in a win rate right there. But for Vici Gaming, I think they're going to continue what they did with, uh, with game one. Basically, try to get long a good matchup in that sense. Do kind of what EDG does and uh, save your last top lane pick for, uh, for long in the top lane. Have to see what that's going to be as once again the Vladimir and the Camille band away. Azir locked in immediately for Easy Hoon and Swift returning to that Sidwani. Uh, yikes. Uh, so this is what Vici is known for, but it's also a very slow paced game. If you look at Snake though, I I kind of worry for them going into playoffs. If you look at their bands, they have to ban away Scion. So this is this is a pick that kind of inhibits Wandra in the top lane. They also have to ban away Olaf, which is something that can uh, destroy Crystal and Hootie in the bot lane and they have to first pick Tom Kench. So, uh, this is kind of a weak showing against the bottom of the of the league right now. Mm -hmm. This is a very weak fan pick in terms of uh, in terms of patch 8.5. We are seeing the Zach priority for SOFM as Guoguo knows he's up against the world champion with his own skin and will take Rise into it, the matchup that he just tried to play from the other side. Snake coming out with a much more dynamic uh, crew right here. They have a lot of long-range initiations, Rome Work, Zac, and Abyssal Voyage all help that. And this is a comp they play very, very well. Like we said in the game one, a lot of times the observers cannot catch up to Snake making plays around the map. We'll have to see if the observers have hot fingers today as there's another top lane ban for Flandre after that performance in game one. That is entirely unsurprising, but that means Snake continue to pair down Lone's pool. Is he gonna give Jace another try? Is oh, this dear. what this is about, Lone? It's like, all right, that gangplank, he's really good on it, that. It was one time. Yeah, it, it's one champion. We're, we're gonna, you know, switch it up a little bit. <laughs> Oof. We'll have to see what that's going to be. As Varus is banned away from Crystal, huge champion for him. This is going to shift the damage profile on Snake. Pretty much all of the damage dealing champions for Flandre have been taken out of the draft. Of course, Ryze can still go to the top lane. That's one of their only outs in this type of situation. Uh, they could go with something super out of the blue, like Echo Rise, or something really dynamic and able to catch out a lot of the, the players. But Ooh. if they go for a straight tank, uh, a lot of the damage uh, responsibilities will fall back onto Crystal. Putting the faith on the likes of their AD carry. Can he pull through for Snake and have a strong laning phase in this game too as Jin is picked up by Snow. Now both Zaya and Rakan are open, but we already see the Tom Kench for Hujie. It's a weird comp. I don't like Jin Azir because they spike at Whoa! very different times. What? He did it! Oh man. I cannot believe he's done this. <laughs> That's me right now. <laughs> I had no idea. Uh, Actually picking up the Draven in the confidence matchup. Am I gonna... Oh, oh please Flandre. do the Jays. Please do the Jays. Come on, man. Hootie, oh, Hootie's feeling spicy. He's already know, he knows he's got Tom Ketch. He just wants to add just a little bit more salt to the wound as Karma It's a rise top. Locked in. It's a rise top. So like we said, basically Flandre, the first one to really uh, pick up the rise top and if he goes for the right top, it also uh, preserves their damage kind of composition. They like a lot of damage from Flandre. He's, I think, the third highest damage dealers for a top laner. So they definitely want to preserve that part about their system. He is going to pick him the rise. And even though Draven on Crystal might seem a bit weird, he actually is very good on this champion. This yeah. is the champion that's made him famous. And it is an unplanned. They do have the karma to go with it. 
Draven, in fact, was, uh, sorry, he was a Draven one-trick for a very long time so far. He's played 15 games on the champion, 66% win rate, so 10 out of those 15 have been victories for him, with an average whopping 4.0 KDA. Yeah, you do have to remember the, uh, the, the thing about Draven and Crystal is this is the pick that brought him into the LPL. Yeah, yeah. In the final game, he picked Draven and got 19 kills. Yes. And he was like, I'm going to the LPL. I don't care about any of this obstruction. He came up from the, uh, I believe it was the LSPL tournament. Yep. And, uh, oh, sorry, that was from the TGA to LSPL. So he was fighting a city level, province level teams. But still, it was a very impressive showing and forever cemented his connection with the pick. And perhaps this could be Snake. This could be Crystal saying, hey, you know, game one, people are starting to doubt my positioning. They're starting to doubt when I disrespect my opponents. Well, you know what? I'm going to do that this entire game. I will take Draven and I will beat you. Uh, that said, he's up against the likes of Snow and Caveman, who had an excellent game one. Caveman on that Rakan, this time in game two. On the likes of Alistar, pretty good into the likes of Draven. I'm feeling a bit queasy here. I feel like Fish might have better chances in the bet we've had so far. We'll have to see. Will Vici be able to bring us to a game three, or will Crystal on his signature pick be able to shut them down? As Vici Gaming, eight game wins in 2018, looking for their ninth. Or a very hard champion to play. The oh yeah. Now Draven players, they might not drop axes, but they do sometimes drop your drop your expectations of them. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's a very said, difficult thing. We've loaded on for game two. Very big volume from the Vici fans in the crowd, knowing that they're up against the home team of Snake in Chongqing. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of energy. We really like that. So to, to you know, bring the conversation back to a normal level, let's, we should talk about what the compositions are trying to do here. Uh, Snake, I think this is kind of a show match, to be honest. This is mainly about how well they can prop up Crystal, allow him to really carry, and show those other playoff teams that our bot lane is not a pushover. That's what it's mainly about to me, honestly. It's, a uh, let's really try to get all the ganks onto the bot lane, you know, punish the chin and try to prop up Draven. Let's do a statement match. For VG Gaming, I think this team composition is a bit more serious in a sense. What they want to do is they want to tower dive with Swift. They can put the stand United on it, and they can also follow up the damage with Snow. So again, a bit more bot lane focus. Now take a look at the leash start from SOFM. He starts off on the Wolves with a leash from Flandre, taking that spell flux to propel that Zac out of position. Of course, Zac not needing the blue for the mana, only using it for the cooldown reduction. We'll have to see if he could look for an early gank bottom as Snow. Ooh, he's trying to not take hits from these axes. That's even the Soul Reaver skin that Crystal loves to use, not Gladiator. We should note that the uh, keystones that Draven is bringing is the Airy. Yep. Now, this was a big point of discussion between Crystal and Jackie Love. Jackie Love himself actually prefers the uh, fleet footwork, but Crystal's like, no, you got any damage. Bro. <laughs> yeah, of course. Mana flow ban, gathering storm, presence of mind, cut down, and bloodline. Uh, I believe alacrity for additional attack speed. Yep, That's the name of that one. Yep. Uh, so the things that we are seeing is absolute focus being oh, much common. Flash engage. Huje trying to retreat. Swift unable to go uh, to go in. Absolute focus. That's the one. Yeah, yeah. Absolute yeah. focus. We've been seeing this quite often. Uh, I think it's actually pretty good for a team fight scenario. If you look at usually when people start a 5v5 team fight, your AD carry is at full health. With uh, with Gathering Storm in absolute focus, you can burst your late game team fight to 40 additional AD. So that's kind of like getting a free BF sword. Generally, pretty good for Draven. The more AD, the better. Of course, last time we saw that was in the NALCS. Arrow playing the champion against the likes of Cloud9. 
I always hold my doubts with uh, favorite player. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, Crystal is was, I should say, a Draven one trick as Swift. Yeah. You know, he showed himself bottom at here. I actually really like what SOFM is doing. He immediately invaded into the Raptors, and even though Vici pinged it, they couldn't stop him. He stole the Raptors, he already cleared his own. Gorgo was able to shadow down and spot out Swift right there. Yeah, what's really noteworthy about this pathing right now is uh, SOFM, he actually saves the blue buff and the uh, the Grom here. Oh, there's another fight happening, but nothing's gonna come of it. So what he does here is that sometimes this allows him to control blue timing. He can do very early blue handoffs in bad matchups for the mid lane. That's something super interesting that he does. And also what he can do is that once he gets his levels a bit higher, he can then clear the camp with more efficiency. Uh, the camps only respawn in terms of levels once you clear them. So if he keeps them there, he can get free gold a bit easier. Ooh, that Shadow Dash landing onto Flandre. Spirit's Refuge, but he flashes away. Swift, ready with the stun, is able to hit it. Room Prison on cooldown, that's big damage. Flash for the auto, but SOFM is in there. Long is gonna be knocked up. Tries to retreat, oh. but he has no flash. Goes down, Blondre gets first blood, and Swift might be the second. Auto attack is not enough. Yeah, so I actually think that Swift might have been spotted out uh, on his pathing right there. We do see a number of wards in Fiji's jungle. A very good flash by Flandre, dodging the Q, and then the follow-in from SOFM. Huge play from SOFM to defend his top lane. And we already said he wards the most out of any jungler in the league, nearly anyone in general, including supports. Uh, and take a look at that top side of the map. There are five wards. Well, four plus Scuttle. Yeah, and uh, take a look at those wards right there. Some of them seem to be... Uh, zombie wards. Yeah, they were placed earlier. Zombies. But look at that. Oh, SOFM flashy. flash slingshot. This is a guy who knows how to play Zac. Yeah. It's one of his most played champions. The champion that he's best known for, honestly. A lot of creative pathing coming in from him. And that does lead me to believe that they probably did spot out where Swift was coming from. Mm -hmm. They did have wards just about everywhere. One at the yes. Krug, one at the Raptors, one in Tribush. There's nowhere else for Swift to go through except for lane, and that wasn't the case. As the wave gets pushed in, Guagua holding down the fort in the mid lane with Karma. 5 CS lead, but already Flandre is again set up to succeed. We thought it would be bottom lane that receives the most pressure for Snake. But this time, it's a quick turn on the top lane that gives Snake the first early advantage. Knock up and a snare, but Hu Jay just picks that Draven up and spits him right back out. I believe that's Ignite, Ignite used onto Crystal as well. He's still holding on to heal, and Hu Jay has the Ignite of his own. Well, Snake definitely had the backup plan if uh, Draven doesn't work out. That's why they picked the Rise <laughs> top lane. So even though it's a show match, they're, they're taking it somewhat seriously. Uh, the big point of contention to note is that once you hit level 6, I do expect Sidrani Swift to go down there and combo with Snow and, uh, and Caveman right there. Uh, we have seen uh, Hude right now, still doesn't have his flash, so there should be a very clear timing window to do that and hopefully pick up Infernal Drake on the way out. Mm -hmm. Of course, a lot of that incentive goes towards Easy Hoon and Swift to unlock from their jungle or mid lane, respectively, and affect that bottom lane. Because as it is, it's very hard to kill a Tom Kench who looks to be nice and tanky, especially now that SOFM is hanging out on that side of the map and already setting up wards in the river to yeah. look for any movements from Vici. So Vici, I think this is a pretty clear play from them. It lines up with everything they want to do. Blue handoff, bot lane reaching level 6, also completing their item buy. Hudi will still not have his flash. So this is this is going to happen one way or the other. It's yeah. about how can Snake defend this and how are Vici going to execute this play. We'll certainly find out in just a few moments. As Hudie makes his way back into lane, looks like his flash is just about on cooldown. Caveman already starting to clear the way by opening up or sorry, closing out the vision for Snake. Clearing up that river, already a ping though. Will spot Easy Hoon, and he sees the ward go down. Something that plays a little bit less viable as Blue Buff is traded over and Swift at low health has to turn towards Gromp instead. Oh, unfortunately, Swift was delayed so much on his build, he still doesn't have level six. So yeah, I didn't take that into account, sorry. <laughs> yeah, bit of a tragedy, but already you can see Snake have prepared for any sort of contingency, just in case that were to happen again off of the next wave. They cleared out bottom, but there's SOFM. He finds Easy Hoon. Oh, no minion, though. 
as Gorgo clears the minion wave. Good use there from Easy Hoon trying to knock him down mid air. So if Zach lands and goes into his ultimate, he can no longer CC him. So it's a good play from Easy Hoon. Wow, Gorgo actually up by a bad play. The flag. <laughs> uh, yeah, that, that Spirit Link. That, that was just purely a mistake. Uh, Karma was in vision, so there was no reason to do in, that. In vision, she was the lane opponent. <laughs> yeah. SFM <laughs> now lays claim to the Raptor camp. Immediately turns on to Swift and. Starts to trade some damage across. Let's bounce. Carries him away as Easy Hoon. Tries to reposition his sand soldiers. Oh, Glogo with a quick cleanse. Looks to escape, but cannot chase. Damage is being traded back between the two mid laners. Look at where Rise is. Uh, Long is having a bad time in that matchup so far. He's already down by 30 CS. Got the Realm Warp. That's a dive. SOFM pulls Easy Hoon under the turret. Stand United, but Flandre goes in a little bit too far as he flashes away. Shadow Dash for Long misses. And Flandre is able to turn around and machine gun some spells across as Easy Hoon takes a hit. Great side set there from Flandre. Oh, Caveman from the bottom lane. Quick turn on to Caveman as he tries to retreat. Oh, this is spicy. <laughs> so much action. For those of you at home, you can't oh, see it when oh, you're Oh, going. the axes. Oh, catching Swift but not Easy Hoon. Uh, so the swirling death doesn't hit anyone. Bit unfortunate right there. But the swirling death? That isn't, sounds like my high school experience. Isn't oh, <laughs> I'm not familiar with American high schools, but never never got a swirly, Clement. Okay. Uh, it, <laughs> did I read the ultimate correctly though? Is it swirling death? I I don't remember off the top of my head. I believe there's some sort of <laughs> whirling death. Yeah, maybe. It's better than a whirling death. Um, but still, that's still first blood to Snake. They tried to make a play happen in the mid lane, but Vichu were able to hold on. Yeah. Big thing right now is Flandre, how far ahead he is in this matchup right now. We're seeing the gold graph 1.3k ahead of his lane opponent. He's basically 40 CS above. And he's going to get this tower sooner or later. So, you know, Snake, even though they were going to go for an exhibition for uh, Draven, they were like, eh. We still want to win. <laughs> we'll let Flandre show off instead, you know. He's playing the Draven. He gets the cool champion. Flandre is just playing a mage. No teleport, no stand united, no way to defend that turret. Soon to be first brick, though. We'll have to see if Vichy can make something happen elsewhere across the map as Caveman roams around and sets off to start clearing some vision. No dragons have been taken either, and so far, despite the initial skirmishing and trading, haven't seen too much excitement in this game, but we can see Easy Hoon making his way. Oh, I'd say it's very exciting. Down the bottom <laughs> lane. And wh why is that? What do, you, well, what do you find exciting? Well, there's a lot of fights happening around. Like, <laughs> not a lot of deaths, but the, the fights oh, are yeah. pretty, pretty cool to watch. Um, so far, VG Gaming haven't been able to pull the trigger on what they really want to do. If you're picking a Shen, you wanted that to go bot lane. Unfortunately, their top lane is completely imploded. We could kind of see that from the draft. The only way you want to play against the Rise top is you want to gank him early. And Swift tried, but uh, wasn't able to do it. Meanwhile, in the bottom lane, Crystal pushing in as Draven loves to do. Wave after wave, looking for the tier one. SOFM might think of ganking mid, but already Vici have pulled back from that tier one. Because that Rise is unlocked and he is missing. They do know where SOFM is. He did walk over a ward. It's about well, defense. Turning for Caveman. That's the Abyssal Voyage. No flash. And Caveman, despite the ultimate, is just caught by five members again. And they even hand the kill over to Crystal. Such gentlemen. Yeah. That was a really good bait from Saint. So SOFM walks over a ward, waits in place, and then they collapse on the person that was coming to collapse on them. So. No, good vision plays. Now the Infernal Dragon is a quick pickup from Snake off of the back of it. First Dragon of the game, Swift goes in, he finds Crystal. He's still got heal and flash, Wahoochie well, picks him up. Curtain call, will start hitting the support. Long goes in for the big submarine, sacrifices his support again, but that means Vichy sacrifice Easy Hoon as Wogo and SOFM finish him off. That was really well done for Vichy Gaming. That's exactly how I would want the combo to play. Swift going in with the gap closer, Shen Stand United already on him, and all the damage coming out from Snow. Unfortunately, they actually just trade kills there, so still not worth it for them, and also also, it gave a lot of time for Flandre in the top lane to clear out the minion wave. So, good execution, but uh, overall, the gains are still go to Snake. Uh, Easy Hoon was just awkward in that play, to be honest. 
No flash, no position, no one to help him. He goes down, left to die by his team. It's 13 minutes in, Snake already 5,000 gold ahead of Vici. Realm Orb, is he gonna take the red buff? Oh, uh, uh, I think he wanted to. But he didn't take leave. it over the wall. <laughs> Look at his camera, he's laughing too. <laughs> Landre! Look, we know it's a bit of a show match for you, but come on. <laughs> Can't you take this seriously? Use the insurance policy. <laughs> yeah. The show's not in the top lane. No, it's actually going to be how Snake win this game. <laughs> I can't believe he just tried to abduct Red Buff. Yeah. Oh my goodness. And Fun Crystal's play. playing Draven. What a, what's going on, Clement? What year is it? Is this 2015 Snake again? Are they well, trying to show off? Yeah, they're a lot better this split. You know, I, I really can't call them 2015 Snake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're certainly making a name for themselves as the best team in the West. But that said, they've still got a lot of competition before they can really let themselves sit back and relax as they look towards playoffs in just a few weeks. I just want to take a little bit of time to talk about the legacy of Draven in China. So we've had so many good Dravens. Uh, Jackie Love, was when he first started his career, he was a Draven one trick and also a streamer. So he was like uh, about Korean, I think it was about like placed 80 or 100 around that range in high challenger and he was playing draven only so to make draven work in korean high challenger is exceedingly difficult but he was uh he was famous because he started to stream that way and also you have to talk about vincent vincent is one of the best streamers in china also a draven one trick not the vincent we know not vincent lee uh there's another vincent the caster yeah yes um but uh as a uh, as a community Draven has been a massive pick. It's been the pick where you see streamers really make a name for themselves when they go like 30 kills, 40 kills. And there's a lot of knowledge on how you play this pick. Basically, you never want to uh, uh, group as 5v5 with a team. You always want to be on a side lane and continue to punish the opposing 2v2. That's why you go the Bloodthirster. It means that they can never push you out of lane. Well, we now see the Bloodthirster finish 20 CS ahead of Snow, but he's currently grouped up with his team, Clement. Not split pushing at all. Well, Perhaps sieging the tier one. I would say he's uh, somewhat outside because they're playing a one three one. Yeah. So I I I think my theory still stands. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, with Landre split pushing top lane and Guo Guo split pushing bottom lane. It is a very difficult scenario for Vici to deal with, though Easy Hoon is having a great time holding down the fort in the mid lane. We're still watching Long suffer. Up top, nearly 60 CS down, 16 minutes in. He's yeah. having a real tough time, and Flandre, he's Swift is there! He sees Swift! <laughs> he's gonna take his trucks. And can't do anything! So this is a problem with Long. Uh, he has a very inadequate champion pool. He doesn't play a lot of the things that are in the meta. We, we really aren't in a time where it's okay, where if you only have like Maokai, Nautilus, and Poppy. There are those metas, certainly, but this is not one of them, and... To be honest, Long has, has been holding the team he's, back for a while. He's been struggling for a while, though he's yeah. been with Vici for a very long time. There's still plenty of room for him to try to grow and reclaim that form that he once had. But for now, Snake are just taking up the pace of this game. SOFM looking for Rift Herald. Guo Guo grouped up with Hujie and Crystal. Just clearing out wards, clearing out vision, setting up for something. But this early in the game, there really aren't too many objectives to worry about outside of that tier one. Might be the Rift Herald that they use to finally break it down. Snake, 5k ahead already. Rise is unstoppable on the split push. They can pretty much play 1-3-1 one, one and use that to end the game. Like, they have no real reason to group at this point. Unless they wanted to find some kills, That's add to fun. the Draven highlight reel. <laughs> Yep. Like you said, this is a bit of a show match for the team. First in the league, again, uh, sorry, first in the West versus last in the West. And Vici, again, have already been disqualified from playoff contention. There is no chance that they make it in. So this is just Vici playing for them, playing for 2018 summer. Interesting build coming out of Snow right here, following up the Ghost Blade with a Zeal item. We've seen SMLZ do this as well. Uh, the basic idea is if you don't have a great early game, you don't go double armor pen and try to go back to the crit. Any way of getting pulled, and that's Rift Herald going for the charge. Mid-tier one is broken down by Snake. Is, no that, is that zeal item from uh, Snow going to be enough to defend the Rift Herald push? No. <laughs> okay. 
Excellent analysis, Clement, as Crystal steps forward to get even more chunks onto the Tier 2. I saw them on the side. Fancies himself a dive, but decides not to commit because still Flandre is now 70 CS ahead of Long. Working on a Tier 2. Can nothing stop this guy? Well, maybe, maybe missing minions. That'll stop him. I will have a top lane ranking tomorrow. Ah. Uh, and I do see Flandre as second place. You're going to have to guess who's first, who's third. But I, I do have Flandre on second place. He's That's very good in lane. On average, 300 gold ahead at 15 minutes. And also, I think he's one of the best team fighters. Like, Flandre coming off the flank has been incredible. I'm most impressed with his uh, game flank flanking. It's just like triple barrels every single time. Yeah, so. that's, that's what we saw in the previous yeah. game. This time it's on Rise where he's doing work on the champion. Looking for the dive onto Lung, who's forced to flash away before Hujie and, uh, sorry, uh, Hujie and Crystal can even get some damage in. The tier two is broken as once again, Snake are opening up the map. Easy Hoon, not even safe to push up to this tier one as SOFM is there. I really do think this game kind of showcases the problems with BG. They are pretty much a snapshot of 2015. Uh, they don't really move with the times. Yeah. The Zier doesn't work with the Jin at all. Uh, they have very different power spikes. You're looking at very late game with the Zier, and you're looking at like up tempo gameplay and uh, trying to make catches with the Jin. So you rarely see those two champions pick together. It just seems that they're, they're they're trying to play within the tendencies of their players, but the times have moved past them. Yeah. Swift seems to be the most progressive player on the team, taking Sidwani and invading him. That is a very loud Baron spawn. Yes, it is. As uh, Baron makes her way onto the rift. Her way? His way? Does Baron have a gender? Uh, I, I guess would not Baron's, presume it. Barons are traditionally <laughs> male and Baronesses are female. But Void Creature, I don't know. Question for another time then. Yeah, ask Kaisa. <laughs> <laughs> if anyone does at this point, the daughter of the void. That said, no Kaisa this game. As Swift, he's trying to maintain vision. You can see he's working with Caveman to set up wards as best he can around this jungle on the top side of the map, but already Snake setting up some wards of their own. Flandre still split pushing bottom. He's even forced to use his turret to defend mid. It's just a matter of time before Snake find an opening. Yeah, and Snake are playing this incredibly patiently. They're willing to go one through one until they feel they have enough items to instantly take the Baron. It's pretty much what we're seeing right now and why the game has slowed down. Swift spotted out by a ward, but already look at the vision that's been cleared on that side of the map. There are still a ward in front of Baron and a ward in Tribush that has just been pinged out by Snake, so they know that this is the case. Wave is pushed up. Flandre. He's already sitting on top of the Baron. He's pretty big. Starts charging up some spells. As Crystal They're trying to bait, bait this. And so go. goes in. He manages to find Caveman. Carries him back with the Let's Bounce. But again, Unbreakable Will. Keeps him topped up. SOFM pulls two together. He goes low, but still has the Cell Division. On the side is Flandre. He Realm Warped in for the flank, but he doesn't have enough support. He's still doing enough damage, though, as SOFM goes forward. And Caveman, the first casualty of the fight, has died. Long Shadow Dash is under the turret. Swift goes low. Chase and pulled back in again. Another kill as they are traded over Cell Division. Proc for SOFM, and he is fine. F-I-N-E as he chases Vici back to the fountain. Yeah. Huge miss opportunity from Easy Hoon right there. He should have blocked off the choke a lot earlier at the red buff and to prevent Snake from continuing to charge into their composition. Snake actually didn't have a very good engaged target. They brought back Caveman and they were Stan United on him as well. Yeah. To be fair, Stan United should not have been used oh, on the cow. Flandre <laughs> doesn't have the spell binder. Takes three turret shots oh. to zone away snow. Now curtain call is up. Already you can see Snake are getting ready for the inevitable body block. Trinket, that's one shot, but Baron has been taken. Can he get a kill? No, he cannot. Snake, take the Baron and make their way back to base. Yeah, basically running with a, uh, kind of ramming their way through a bad situation right here. So if you watch Snake's initiation, they got Caveman. Stan United should not go down on Caveman. I, I think that was actually a mistake. If you watch Easy Hoon, he actually had a chance to disengage through the, uh, he should have cut off the left side and then all went on Flandre. That should have been the play right there. He holds on to his ultimate for some reason. I don't understand why he's playing the team fight in this manner. I feel like that's that's just a mistake from him. 
and uh, Snake are able to uh, to follow through and clean everything up. Uh, basically, Crystal and Blondre were able to auto attack and use all of their skills whenever they wanted to. Uh, I, I don't understand Easy. He, he needed to cut the left flank off. He cuts the left flank off. They all go on Blondre. They could save that T fight. We do just see a teleport from Flandre as he makes his way back onto the map with a full death cap buy after the end of this. They're <laughs> collapsing and once again, Easy Hoon has been found out of position. He's able to dash away. Thistle Voyage as Gogo chases. Emperor's Divide and still he's running, but he is wasting time on this Baron buff. Flandre though is not one to be distracted, still pushing top lane and ready to group with his team, perhaps flank from behind with that Realm Warp. Good play from Snake there. Usually I would expect in a show match for Crystal to chase him down, spend 30 seconds on it, but you know, they're playing very rational with it. <laughs> Try to finish this off. Take a few minutes off of that average game time that is so high. 36 minutes and 18 seconds. Now a full nearly 12 minutes faster than that in this game too, as they're looking to break down the inhibitor. Crystal, so many shields, plus the Ardent Sensor. He breaks it down. If you look at what Goku is doing, it's actually quite hilarious. He's uh, standing very far back from Crystal and basically giving him damage, sure. This is a stat padding achievement. Now the first inhibitor has been broken. Ooh, that that was a bit of a tragedy for Swift as he just splits the wickets. SOFM goes in. Let's bounce to abduct Caveman. But Crystal and Guoco oh, are going oh, two versus the world. Oh, that's oh, one. That's two. Not able to get three as Easy Hoon makes it back onto the base. But Realm Warp as they catch it up, finally. Another kill traded over, a double for Flandre, a double for Crystal, and that snake knock, knock, knocking on Vici's door, and Vici are unable to answer because they're dead, Clement. <laughs> that was such a great hand up, but 404 coming out from the stat line oh, for Crystal. And the abducted SFM taken into the fountain goes down. He has himself a chuckle in base as they continue to chase it down. The kill for Crystal, the unofficial triple, as Snake closed out the series 2 to 0. And we can see smiles all around the Snake, uh, the Snake roster right now. They picked a, a bit of a show match roster. I don't think this was a especially serious game for them. Uh, just taking Vici out of their misery, and we got a good game. We got a game with a lot of action, <laughs> with a lot of signs. Like I said, that was me once I saw the Draven. Yeah, locked in. it basically reads that oh! Snake are going to win both. <laughs> exactly. So, and they did win. They both. absolutely did. Two to zero. Though game one was a bit of a drag for them, a bit of a slower game. Game two, they certainly made up for it. Once they were able to find a bit of an early advantage, find a little bit of confidence. It looked like Vici didn't stand a chance. Yeah, Vici, they drafted very poorly, I would say. I don't think their composition made a lot of sense. You can see some of their problems. Their picks are really stuck in the past. They're not keeping up with the times or the patches. We've seen flashes of brilliance coming from their bot lane, Caveman, but at the end of the day, Snake still defend the Snake pit. They absolutely do as they get one step closer to playoffs. Now only a single series win from locking in their playoff spot. And getting that much closer to the finals and MSI beyond. Oh, that's a tall task for them, but it, it is about time that casters start to think about who's actually gonna go. Mm -hmm. Very well could be if Snake are able to transition towards a excellent postseason and continue their regular season momentum. That said, they've got some stiff competition <laughs> looking across from them. In Coach is really gaming, happy. Rogue Warriors. Okay, this, this is him saying like, man, you need more kills. What was <laughs> five? We expected eight out of that you. Was, that was <laughs> it? Just five? Yeah. That said, it was his first Draven of 2018. Yeah, so there is actually a specific type of a video from Draven players. It's uh, 30 kills a game or 50 kills a game. That's uh, or what they try to go for. I see, I see. <laughs> but. Unfortunately, only five. Uh, this time, this time. And again, this is the same coach who ran out on stage crying when Snake first defeated EDG, screaming, nice, nice. Very, very passionate player. Sorry, coach for them. But with that two to zero, 25 minutes in, Snake closed out the series and though was a little bit sloppy with some of the fights, some of the dives, it really didn't look like Vici stood a chance. Yeah, it, it was uh, so far beyond Vici's control, but I would say that this match doesn't give me a lot of faith in Snake coming into the playoffs. Like we talked about in the band picks, I felt that was a fairly weak draft on the 8.5, having to take away the Scion to allow Flandre to operate, having to take away the Olaf, and then first picking the Tom Kench, yeah. just all to protect the bot lane. I don't and see that doing well. <laughs> Crystal picks Draven. Suddenly... Yeah, so you could say that they're maybe putting up a front, uh -huh. but I don't think they're 
I still don't see them as being very well adapted to 8.5. Hmm. They haven't proven that to me. Well, they've got plenty of opportunities to learn and grow. That said, it's now up to our analysts to break down that series. pick there oh he's trying very hard to analyze that dream that's papa clement for you just can't <laughs> oh, he legitimately cannot get impressed by anything we, get, we keep giving him stuff he's like oh but they got a, a, a 10k goal why did you have 30 kills draven what's wrong with you <laughs> yeah tom kinch priority pick and then he thinks that the draven is yeah we gotta analyze that. i don't think it's a good yeah 8.5, but let's talk about something that was very cool after we go through this draft. Okay. It was uh, SOFM's path. Because Raz, you and I, we were watching that game, and we were just so amazed by SOFM and how he managed to screw over Swift so hard. Yeah, because ultimately, Swift had no idea where he started. Probably immediately thought he was started blue buff going bottom side, but then Swift went towards the bottom side to see if there was any raptors in the enemy jungle. Wasn't any raptors. And he's like, okay, well, well, where I'm going to go to my own raptors that I left open. Those ne there's no raptors here as well. He actually got completely demolished when it came to down to the largest experience in the game, coming down to both raptor camps and his own Krug. So he found himself at a one level disadvantage, level five to SOFM's level six, and was constantly finding himself getting out ganked in a lot of cases just because there was no there was no vision as to where SOFM was. Yeah, and again, a reminder is is that it was a very early rotation from the wolf cap raptor cap, and then grabbing a delayed red buff as yeah. well as a delayed blue buff. And SOFM does these type of pathing things a lot. And again, it all goes back to SOFM's mantra, his mentality, his coach, mm -hmm. a former Tenekun, and explaining how to manipulate experience. And anytime you want to study SOFM's pathing, it's always about how he's manipulating experience in the camps to create his tempo advantage. And then you brought up this idea that Swift's then in the dark. He has no idea, no information. That's what's so fun when it comes down to this individual jungle matchup between SOFM and Swift, because both of them love to be able to just mess up the other jungle's pathing, at least track them down, and then constantly look towards enemy blue buff when it's spawning and have their team rotate around them but it was legitimately just swift constantly playing defense he was able to get his second raptor camp or at least look to contest for it because the moment he came there he's like what are you doing zach so he fought him there and it was supposed to be guo guo that helped up zach out so actually that was guo guo's mistake in backing but that just kind of formulates the idea between both of these junglers the moment they get a slight advantage of just vision or understanding where the enemy jungler is or when their camp is spawning, they're bringing the team with them. Yeah, and I think the, the phrasing that we used was spicy meatball or spaghetti that was being thrown oh, yeah. around at nine minutes of the game when everyone and their mother suddenly was <laughs> flailing into the, the mid lane trying to make something happen. Um, but like you were saying, the, the tempo advantage was then created from Zach from an early game, messed up uh, Swift's initial two clears, and then suddenly when Draven is given this massive kill and he's got a bloodthirst to his first item, the potential of a dive and threaten bottom is so massive with a fed draven in his act. Yeah, I was looming over every lane, specifically mid lane and bottom lane, just because you were talk I was talking about the moment Bloodthirster was going to get picked up, even Draven has the ability to just tank tower. It just really came down to who's going to deal damage afterwards. So, if you are swift, you're locked towards the bottom side of the map. I thought that Caveman at least did a good enough job of bouncing between both mid lane and bottom lane to at least have the defense on Azir so Azir didn't get dived underneath their own turret. So, it was there was some con tension happening. There was some contesting happening, that is. But ultimately, the dive ended up happening, and that's when we were talking about the spaghetti moment, because that was a messed up dive from Snake. And then there was the counter dive, or at least trying to push and get a kill Just off of Rise. And it was like, can we get anything going? Is, that, is anything going to land? And no, it didn't. But you saw the idea formulating. Yeah, probably not indicative of how Snake will treat the playoffs, but uh, <laughs> a good momentum shift. And man of the match does go to Crystal, and a lot of the momentum was really behind him. He picks up his signature pick of the Draven. Crystal has been pretty much been on utility duty for Snake this entire time. You know, has Prodigy ADC Light behind him. He's pretty much taking the starting position because he's considered the superior team player. Uh, will pick those utility picks like the Ash previously, but this time around was unleashed a little bit. Yeah, I mean, he's been getting questioned quite frequently in the last week because he went up against some really tough competition. Uzi, SMLZ, just the best 80 carries in the league. And when he's getting stomped like that, this is a good bit of confidence being just plunged right back into him. I love the idea that he was able to get back onto the Draven pick and had effectiveness. In fact, the team would rotate around him. So this was a good game from him. And I think he had a strong laning phase as well. Yeah, and frankly, strength of schedule. Now that Snake have already taken down EDG 2-1, their momentum and ride into playoffs is, is quite a breeze. The next 
toughest opponent that they would have would be Team WE, who are on slightly the rise with Magic and Slash Shield fitting better with the team. But otherwise, you're basically looking at Bun Plus Phoenix, uh, BLG, yeah. Team WE, and that just kind of seems like a cakewalk for Snake. They shouldn't even have to, you know, uh, show any of their hands for this playoffs. Yeah, and I think it comes down to how you use practice from this point forward, because on stage practice, we've seen that even Clement's been saying, maybe Snake's putting up a front with a lot of their picks, because we could see them kind of showcase a few practice points. Maybe we play Draven here, not as a fun kind of gesture, but it's like, maybe we want to find this in a best of five. If we get into the first game of best of five, we throw in a Draven, see how that goes, and then we go back towards a Caitlyn or an Ash pick when it, we feel like it's necessary. So this is tough for them just because they're not going to have the most competition within their own group, but then when they go back into the playoffs, they at least have an idea around strategy. I feel like we are really bending over backwards for this Draven pick, but you've heard it here. Now that said, because we are changing venue, our last match was in Chongqing, and we are now coming back to Shanghai for our match of the week. There will be an extended delay, but I promise it's going to be worth it. It is Invictus Gaming versus Royal Never Give Up next match, and we will see you soon.